Hello and welcome back to Green Money Momentum, where we talk about market movements, making money, and money momentum. And those who are in D-Wave Quantum, ticker symbol being QBTS, saw some positive price movements today. As the stock is up 17%, I am filming this just a couple minutes before the markets close, but D-Wave Quantum had a, uh, a pretty big push today, up 17%. And this continues the trend that we have been seeing this week. As the stock is up 30% for the week, we saw us go from being below $5 to now we are sitting at $6.87. And at one point today, we were up all the way to $7. And this is pretty big as the overall market took a continued plunge today. So we know the markets have been pretty ugly lately and most of the markets did lose today. So you see in the bottom left corner, there were 26% of stocks that gained value while 72% lost. But our precious D-Wave Quantum was one of the ones that actually did gain value today. And we just talked about this stock yesterday. The news that sent this stock up was that we did have an earnings call for QBTS. This was announced in the pre-market and we got some pretty good uh, news and some pretty good guidance for the future uh, revolving D-Wave Quantum. And so today I'm going to do my technical and fundamental analysis of this play. But before I do, I want to say as always that this is not financial advice. I always recommend doing your own due diligence before making any financial decisions. So let's hop into it with the technical analysis. And so we're going to be doing our short-term technical analysis of QBTS first. And when we look at the short-term trends on QBTS, we could see that we have kind of been stuck in a sideways channel. So if you know the history of quantum and everything that has gone on, in January, there was a bearish uh, take by the NVIDIA CEO. He said that he thought quantum would take a lot longer and that if you're investing into quantum, it may be a long time before you actually see any real world applications with quantum. And if you followed the earnings today, which we're going to talk about in a second, this may not be the case. And what the NVIDIA CEO said many months ago may have just been a bearish take because with D-Wave uh, specifically, it looks like they're already using these quantum computers in the real world and their sales are going up. So their revenue is going to get a lot better, which again, we're going to talk about here in a second. But just on the technical analysis side of things, the low we've recently saw was right at the $4 mark. So that is where our support lies for QBTS. The middle line of resistance that we want to reach is right around the $8 mark. So slightly under that, around 740. When we look at the uh, chart here on not just candlesticks, but on the lines, we can see that the top here was right around 740. So on a short term, we want to see where we're reaching today. We want to see us reach uh, to the next resistance level at 740. If we see that, the next major resistance level would be right at $10, right where we were at before we saw all the fear, uncertainty, and doubt again put out by the NVIDIA CEO. He says that he doesn't see quantum computing have any, having any real world application in the near future, but D-Wave would uh, rebuttal that because with their earnings call, Quantum says that their computers are already being used in the real world and that they have achieved quantum supremacy by being the first company to achieve real world results with its annealing quantum computer. And we just talked about this yesterday. There is a lot of big corporations that uh, work alongside D-Wave. So we know Google, IBM, and and Toyota are all in talks with D-Wave to use their quantum computers. And so they are looking like one of the front runners when it comes to quantum computing. And the numbers back this up as the projections from D-Wave Quantum for the future are very bullish. And this is what sent the stock up today. And so D-Wave's uh, revenue isn't necessarily the best right now. For quarter four of 2024, it came in at just $2.55 And also, they did miss their earnings. Uh, they made a negative $0.08 cents per share. So their earnings per share was at negative $0.08. Cents. And so with those two numbers, uh, you may be wondering, why did things go up? That doesn't seem too positive. But for 2025, in just the first quarter they're looking to 4x that revenue and so with the last quarter it was at 2.55 million the next quarter we're expecting to see 10 million and when we look at the earnings history for D-Wave Quantum, we could see that a 10 million earnings expectation is very, very bullish. And it looks like this company is turning around quick. As the whole history for QBTS, they have never made more than 2 million in a quarter. And so their highest expectation was for quarter uh, four of 2023, where the earnings expectations were around 5 million, 4.73. And they greatly missed that and still at two. So they've always been right at two. And so for us to possibly see 10, in the next quarter with that guidance that is absolutely huge for d-wave 
And so right now, things are looking pretty bullish for D-Wave Quantum. The overall quantum computing sector, I believe, has a lot of intrinsic value behind it, especially if these quantum computers are really going to do what they say they're going to do, help us solve real-world uh, problems at a faster rate. So if you don't know what a quantum computer is, it is basically a supercomputer or a computer on steroids. And so for D-Wave Quantum to be the leader in the commercial space of quantum computers and working with such big companies, and again, now having a a positive uh, growth outlook for the future. I myself am very, very bullish on D-Wave Quantum, but I also want investors to remember that the markets lately have been choppy. So again, the overall stock market was red today, and this just continues the trend that we have been on of extreme fear. So with the fear and greed index, we could see that we are at a very low 15, and the overall market has been very spooked. This comes off of what I call the three-headed dragon of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. That is number one inflation so a lot of investors and just uh just everybody is freaking out about inflation the cost of eggs the cost of gas the cost of everyday items everything seems to always be rising number two the tariffs and so trump has been talking a lot about tariffs which have been shaking up the markets and putting a lot of uh, uncertainty and doubt everywhere and so that has caused a mass sell-off and then third what i think is the biggest part of the three-headed dragon that is the interest rates and so we know that interest rates greatly uh, affect the economy, influence the economy, and also the stock market. And so historically, when interest rates are being cut, when they are going down, the market tends to pump. And and then there's the tightening cycle, which we are in right now. And we know at the end of 2024, the Fed came out and they changed their projection from four rate cuts this year to just two. Now, this is important because, again, the overall market has been bloody. There is a chance that on the 18th to the 19th, so just next week, uh, the FOMC, they're going to have their next meeting. There is a chance that they could cut rates again. If this does happen, I think that the markets will go absolutely ballistic. This is what a lot of investors have been looking for and this is why i encourage my audience while the uh while the fed has not been the most stimulative with cuts this is the time to invest because when the rate cuts do come eventually we know they will come because the fed is not going to allow the market to absolutely uh collapse to nothing when they do come this is when we will see a big rocket up and those investing right now should have the greatest gains so will that happen coming up well uh, it is unlikely. And so this is on Calshi. This is a, uh, a betting site um, for uh, future events that are happening. And this is for the Fed decision in March. Um, so the one next week, and uh, we are expecting to see no change. And so right now, uh, there is a 98% chance that there shouldn't be a change when it comes to interest rate. Uh, this is expected. And so the meeting next week could send the markets down a little bit, but investors are already expecting this. Uh, and so if the rate doesn't get cut, we may see a little bit more bloody uh, in the market, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. But if there's a reverse in course, like I say, if the rates uh, get cut, oh man, the markets will go crazy. And so where does that put us with quantum? Well, I want investors to know, um, if you didn't check out my video yesterday, what I was talking about is there was actually a little bit of halting in D-Wave Quantum. And so before we did see the big rise yesterday, the stock was actually untradeable for a short amount of time. This tells me that the shorts are in QBTS and there's a lot of short selling behind this. Uh, and then when we look at the overall short interest behind QBTS, it is also high at 21%. That is a crazy short interest. Anytime you get above 10, uh, that shows that there could either be a big drop or a big squeeze. And so what I encourage investors to remember when investing into QBTS and quantum is that these stocks are very volatile. They could go either way. Don't be naive to what the markets uh, could bring, especially because of the three-headed dragon of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, inflation, tariffs, and the interest rates. But as we just saw with the most recent earnings call from QBTS, they do have a positive bullish outlook for the future. And so the market's overall very choppy right now, but the intrinsic value is growing behind D-Wave Quantum, and I am a long-term investor in D-Wave. And so right now we are seeing some volatile movements towards the upside. Uh, uh, there could be a retraction, but we could also see the squeeze continue for D-Wave. Again, overall macroeconomics haven't been great, but it is positive. Our stock was green in the red market today. Um, so myself, I'm very bullish on D-Wave and I'm very bullish on Quantum, but I would love to hear what everyone else has to say in the comment section below. If you're buying D-Wave, if you're shorting D-Wave, uh, either way, please just drop that comment. Please leave a like and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Thank you all so much and I'll see you in the next one.